Although this may be a different type of video and a different type of content that I'm providing to you guys, I would love if you would show me your support, your feedback, and anything you feel or deem necessary to show me that I'm doing the right thing or I'm going the right direction. Regardless, I hope you enjoy. Comic-Con, or the aptly named Denver Pop Culture Con, as it is in the past couple of years, has made its rounds through the minds of many normal people and through the minds of many hardcore fans of many of popular culture's most exciting and fun, fast-paced environments. Now, this year was a little bit different for me. I got the opportunity to cover it as not only a fan, but as a reporter. I've been a few years in the past, and this type of event's very, very exciting for me. I love it. I am a big fan. I read a few different types of comics. I obviously watch all the movies, and I play a, a lot of video games. So seeing all these artists, designers, coders, programmers, illustrators, authors was kind of a cool experience. But before I can get there, there's one giant piece. One piece of a secret world that not many people understand that I had to explore before I got my opportunity to cover it in full. This is the secret world of cosplay. Now, cosplay is something that is obviously costume and play. It's uh, mixed words. You, know, you see the C-O-S and the P-L-A-Y. But overall, it's a very, very big creative fest where people can put together their own minds, their own creativity, get inspired and go, whether it be honoring something, whether it be going out and showing people and talking to kids and showing them cool things, or bringing your own mind and creativity to the front stage. This is what I experienced at Denver Pop Culture Con. But before we go to Pop Culture Con, we have to go to where you can get your items for Pop Culture Con. My name is Matt Greer, and I am a manager at the Wizard's Chest. And the Wizard's Chest is Denver's only castle devoted to toys and magic and games and costumes. The Wizard's Chest has been in Denver for almost 40 years. It was opened in Cherry Creek in 1981, I believe. Actually, it was 1980. So this would be the 39th year of the Wizard's Chest, and next year will be the 40th anniversary. Um, we were in Cherry Creek for 35 years, and then four years ago, we moved over here to 451 Broadway, which is our current address. As you can see, we moved, and we have twice as much space, twice as much stuff. We're in an old um, car storage warehouse that was converted into a castle, so it's, it's a very exciting time for the store. For Wizard's Chest, for the castle, Denver Pop Culture Con means something. It's a different time of year. They find most of their popularity and store business sales during Halloween. But Denver Pop Culture Con occurring every year, it causes a different type of crowd to come in. Pop Culture Con is an exciting time of the year for the store. Um, we live in, in a world where things have kind of changed and all of this geeky pop culture stuff is very mainstream year round. So we sell lots of Harry Potter stuff and you know Star Wars and Game of Thrones and Marvel Comics, all that stuff year round. But what's cool about Pop Culture Con is this is when everyone dresses up. And so it's kind of like a Halloween in June for us because everyone comes in here and they get their costumes and they get their accessories. Uh, we get to help them do their makeup. And, and it's cosplay, which is really exciting because cosplay is kind of creating the costume. So you're buying lots of pieces and you're buying other costumes and taking parts of them. So it's a real, real creative exercise, even more than Halloween is. So that's what we really like about Pop Culture Con. And it's, it's kind of a time that we get to celebrate all of the stuff that we do here. This time of year is really exciting because it's a lot of people that really love the things they're doing and they get to do kind of more obscure stuff. They get to do some anime stuff, some smaller characters from their favorite movies and TV shows and stuff. And that's mostly people in their 20s and 30s because they have more expendable money. I guess older teenagers too. Um, they have more disposable income and they're going to go to Pop Culture Con and they're going to spend a whole bunch of money. And so they get that started over here, fortunately. The kind and welcoming people at the Wizard's Chest get the opportunity to experience everything just like a fan. We have a booth down there all three days. There's people over there setting it up right now. It's kind of our portable castle. If you're there, you'll see it because it looks like the castle. Um, and we all dress up. We all make our costumes. I myself am going as Gambit from the X-Men. Uh, it's my second X-Men costume. I did Logan a couple years ago. And so what we do is we all get to 
do the same thing everyone else does and find our favorite characters and kind of make a costume that's a little more obscure than, than what you're used to at Halloween. Um, but I really love it. It's really fun because you go down there and you see everybody really letting their, their geeky side out and talking about their favorite little culture or book or whatever that they love to read or watch. The one thing, I, I wouldn't mind going to see Dave Bautista. I think he's really awesome in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I think he's got an interesting perspective on these things because of, of kind of his journey from wrestling to Marvel and all of that. So that's probably the thing I would want to see the most. And this one employee gives his opinion on what people should do if they want to get started in this field. Um, I would say start simple. You know, there's some people that if you've never done cosplay before, you can think that you're going to come in here and find the perfect look for the perfect character that you want for 20 bucks. And it's not that easy. People that do professional cosplay or are really serious about doing it as a hobby spend the whole year working on it and they spend tons of time preparing it so the more complicated of a costume that you're going to do the more time you need to invest in it but if you just want to have fun we got a spider-man costume right off the rack or we got a batman costume and you can just do that and that's totally cool so it's kind of just about the amount of work that you want to put into it because some people bite off more than they can chew and you don't want to do that you don't want to ruin your con experience because you're not satisfied with your costume everybody's got to look good you know it's like prom it really is just like prom not many people realize the amount of effort that goes into making costumes and actually doing it. And as I say that, it's time that you and I travel to the con. Denver, Denver Pop, Pop Culture Con! Denver, Denver Pop, Pop Culture Con! Denver Pop Culture Con. It's such a great time, dearie. You better come down and see it. Oh, de joy. In comes the experience. It's a culture shock for those that have never been. But. Some people have a message. Some people do it for a reason. Some people dress up because they can. This guy, he dresses up for one of his idols, Robin Williams. My name is Julio Martinez, also known as Yensid Cosplays, and I am cosplaying as Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, I've always liked the movie, and uh, we no longer have Robin Williams, so it's kind of a tribute to him, because he did one of my favorite characters, and so it was like a way to honor him. Every few people I hear passing, oh, it's Mrs. Doubtfire, oh, it's Mrs. Doubtfire, so I'm glad people are reacting to it very well. I think what it does is it allows people to be who they want to be, they want to be a different character, totally different from their normal day life. It allows them to do so and allows everybody to come together and appreciate each other's work and uh, effort and cosplays. The unfortunate part about Denver Pop Culture Con is it's only three days. Some people don't have the money to go to all three days or can only go to one. And this group, these two people right here, only got the chance to go to one. But they wanted to spread their creativity to as many different costumes in a short period as possible. Welcome to the story of Brittany Wood. Hi, I am Brittany Wood, otherwise known as Bubbly Waffle Productions, and I am dressed up as Detective Pikachu. And I'm Steven, also part of Trident Productions, and I am Spider-Man. So there's a gentleman here that is the author of a new Ruby novel, um, which we are huge Ruby cosplayers. Um, we love Ruby. This is our only day. However, he is doing two costume changes, and I'm doing three. I am going to be um, Detective Pikachu, um, Beacon Academy, Ruby, I mean, Nora. But, Beacon Academy, Nora Valkyrie from Ruby, and Beacon Academy, Velvet Scarlet Tina from Ruby, and... And I'm gonna be Beacon Academy Ren, also from Ruby. I really like the con, it's a fun menu. Um, Colorado is getting more and more embracing of the pop culture scene, and so it's really cool seeing a giant group of fellow nerds, and knowing that you can be accepted amongst anybody here. Yeah, what she said. And trust me, Nerddom, it spans a lot of different entities. There's obviously TV, there's obviously comic books, art, there's books in general, but there's also video games. And there were plenty of video game creatures and characters out there. The next guy we're about to talk to, he was dressed up from a character from Titanfall, a video game that came out a couple years back. It's a cool experience seeing somebody like this. Uh, my name's Ethan Holmes. I'm dressed up as Jack Cooper from Titanfall. Uh, I dress up because I think it's a pretty fun way to kind of like channel my creativity. You know, I got into it through YouTube and stuff and I uh, decided I could probably try it out on my own. And here I am. Um, 
I mean, with my busy schedule and all that, a couple months, but I'd say about like 20 hours or so for work and all that. Well, a lot of the materials I already had just lying around, a lot of the foam and stuff like that. Uh, but I'd say like no more than $100 for just little like knickknacks and stuff like that. He found things for as simple as $100 for as cheap as a Benjamin it is itself. But some costumes, some cosplays cost a lot more than just $100. They cost more in time, in effort, and they cost a lot more in the ching department. The next person we're going to talk to is somebody that runs a hat shop. Huh. Hats are a part of cosplay. Exactly. A booth out there that shows you exactly what some things can be worth. No, I, I'm the owner of a hat company called Blonde Swan Hats, where I've been doing hats for about 15 years. I'm a um, creator and designer of all these beautiful wares behind me. The most important part of cosplay is just kind of having fun with it. You know what I mean? Like, and also knowing, knowing your budget. <laughs> That's also another important thing people need to realize for cosplay. It's very expensive, but also just having fun with it. I mean, uh, it's obvious, isn't it? Like, there's, it's everywhere. You know, there's booths, there's uh, people representing different um, movies and, and comics. I mean, it's, it all kind of just goes hand in hand, you know what I mean? Now, the price range of your cosplay may vary. It depends on if you want vintage leather handmade hats, or if you want something a little bit more store-bought, or plastic, or cheap, or homemade. Now, the next group of people we're going to talk about is somebody with a cause. Somebody that's quality is bar down one of the greatest out there. And their cause, one of the best to ever do it. Welcome to Star Wars. So my name is Patrick Gillis. I am the base commander for the mountain base of the Rebel Legion. So the mountain base covers Colorado and Wyoming. So Rebel Legion is a Star Wars costuming group. We focus on the good guy costumes in the Star Wars universe. We try to build community with all our members and create love and increase the quality of our costumes. And then uh, we do a lot of charity activities uh, all around the world, so in almost 60 countries now. So uh, at Pop Culture Con this year, we're doing three fundraisers. So today we're doing a fundraiser for the Peter Mayhew Foundation. Uh, we want to make sure that we do a strong tribute to Peter, uh, who recently passed and is you know, near and dear to our hearts as Chewbacca for many years. Uh, the Rebel Legion has worked with the Mayhew Foundation very closely for several years. So we're glad to anything we can do to try to continue to help uh, Angie and the family continue the foundation. Uh, tomorrow we'll uh, do a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish, including uh, what we call the R2KT auction for Make-A-Wish. Uh, so along with the 501st Legion, the Mandalorian Mercs Costume Club, and the Rocky Mountain Fan Force, uh, we'll hold an auction uh, at 5.30 tomorrow night uh, to raise money. All the items were donated to the auction and all the proceeds go directly to Make-A-Wish. And then Sunday we'll do our regular fundraiser for Denver Pop Culture Classroom. Uh, they've always been a good partner with, for us. Uh, we do about four fundraisers a year for them and we're glad to continue that here at the con. So you know, everybody wants to make it out that, that the 501st is our enemies because they're the bad guys and we're the good guys. So I'm a 501st member. I'm actually Darth Vader, a clone, and a snow commander in the 501st Legion. So they're the bad guys doing good and we're the good guys doing good. But we work very closely with them. Um, there's a little bit of good-natured ribbon often. Uh, there's a lot of pilots here because there's an X-Wing fighter here. And a lot of their pilots will take shots at us. And we remind them that while they're a bigger group than us, the good guys always win. The good guys always come out on top. But no conflict is without its sacrifices, without its casualties. And without the 501st, there would be no battle to be had. Hi, I'm Lori Gurnett. I am the executive officer of the Mountain Garrison 501st Legion. The 501st Legion is the a worldwide Imperial Star Wars costuming group. We costume the Imperial side of the Star Wars universe. Some people, those rebel scum, call us the bad guys. We took that and we ran with it. We call ourselves the bad guys doing good. This year at Denver Pop Culture Con, today, Friday, we are raising money for the Peter Mayhew Foundation. Tomorrow is our Make-A-Wish Day. We are gonna be uh, raising money for Make-A-Wish Colorado. We tend to think of ourselves in the 501st as we're here to promote the love of costuming as Star Wars, obviously. 
um, but we also want to be of service in the community in whatever way we can. Um, and some of that's going to be through charity. It's going to be through community functions. Um, sometimes it's for things that are more fun than that. We really like to be able to bring our love of costuming into a realm where we're touching humanity in a positive way. In the instances where it happens with a situation where it's really hard for that person or that child to smile, that's even better. I mean, I've watched a little blind boy explore one of our cosplayers in Bucket, as we say, and go, I recognize you. I have you as an action figure. The one message that really resonated with me after talking to both the Rebel Legion and 501st was this. Come to the dark side. We have cookies and bacon. I hope you enjoyed this kind of in-depth look at some different opinions, different interviews, different thoughts from other people around Pop Culture Con. I'll be around Pop Culture Con for a little bit on Sunday, hopefully, but I hope this is a different type of content that you guys enjoy. I spent a lot of work on this, well over 30 hours between going to the con and editing it. So if anything, if this is on YouTube, give it a like or a comment or subscribe. If this is anywhere else, feel free to leave the feedback the best way as possible for you. Now this isn't sports, obviously, which is typically the content that I do, but I'd love it if you guys would show me what you guys think about this different type of content. I'm not just a sports creator. I'm not just a sports commentator and opinion head over the internet. I'm something more than that, and I appreciate the opportunity to cover different things. So if you want to see more stuff like this, let me know, because I like doing it, and it's fun, and it's exciting, and anything for you guys. Regardless, thank you, thank you very much. I hope you have a good rest of your day, good rest of your weekend. If you're going to the con, enjoy yourselves. You deserve it. Regardless, thank you guys very much. I'll be seeing you sometime in the near future.